Hey everyone, welcome back to Cruising with Matthew, and today I'm going to give you a ship tour of Fred Olsen Cruise Lines Borealis, which I was lucky enough to cruise on in December 2021, so I really hope you enjoy this video. So Borealis started her life as Holland America Lines Rotterdam, which was launched in December 1996, meaning that she is a year older than me. However, in July 2020, it was announced that she would join Fred Olsen's fleet as Borealis, with her maiden cruise with Fred Olsen starting on the 3rd of July 2021 from Liverpool. She is actually the smallest ship I've ever been on, carrying 1300 passengers and also 600 crew. I really like the exterior design of Borealis and I think she looked really smart in her Fred Olsen livery, especially with those distinctive twin funnels on the top. Although she is a medium sized ship, there is plenty to explore so let's take a look around. So decks 1 and 2 consist of entirely cabins, with deck 3 featuring a wonderful wraparound promenade deck. It is much wider than most found on modern day cruise ships, and I especially love the aft area because you get fantastic views of the ship's wake, and you can also hear it roaring in your ears, and it's just something that I absolutely love. It's one of my favourite activities during the day and in an evening, doing several laps of the promenade deck, so I was really impressed with this feature on board Borealis. However, something that I wasn't expecting was the fact that Borealis features terrace balconies, and these don't have their own private balcony, but instead they have doors which open right onto the promenade. Each has its own reserved deck chairs, and there's also a type of one-way glass, meaning that you can't look into the cabins, giving a good sense of privacy. However, it is something to consider, because if you're expecting to have your own private balcony, you may be in for a surprise. But I think this would be a really nice spot, because you back right onto the promenade deck, meaning that you can always quickly bob out of your cabin to take a look at the fantastic views. Now, if we move up to deck four, at the very front of the ship, there is the beautiful theatre on board Borealis, which is known as the Neptune Lounge. This spans two decks, and I love the seating here as well as instead of your traditional theatre seats, you had these lovely lounge seats and sofas, which are really comfortable. This really gave it a more relaxed setting, and I love the traditional design of this venue as well. There seem to be lots of seats, and there didn't seem to be many obstructions like pillars getting in the way, so I feel like you'd have a good seat pretty much anywhere in this venue. Now I'm pretty sure we went here every single night, and I was really impressed with the entertainment in the Neptune Lounge, but also all around the ship. And in the Neptune Lounge, we enjoyed some fantastic performances from the Borealis Theatre Company. This included a show dedicated to movie music called Hits from the Flicks. And also, because it was a festive cruise, we got to have our own Jingle Bell Ball, which was lots of fun. We also enjoyed guest performers such as the fantastic comedian Barnaby, who was absolutely hilarious, as well as the extremely talented magician Davy McCauley. Now moving out of the Neptune Lounge on deck four, there is the photo gallery which is tucked away to one side with the opportunity to purchase any of the photos that you have had taken on board and these can be printed but also digital as well, although the digital ones do cost a little bit extra. One thing I was disappointed with was the fact that they still print out all their photos. Now although there was one touchscreen computer, I feel like they probably should have got a lot more of these to avoid the need of printing out loads and loads of photos that might not be bought and it just seems a bit of a waste to me. Now leaving the photo gallery, we enter the fantastic atrium. Now this is quite unique in my opinion, because this features a gigantic clock tower which dominates the three deck tall atrium, and there's lots of bronze use here as well, and I feel like it felt really traditional and quite cosy and quite welcoming, and I think it looked even better with all the wonderful Christmas decorations around the spiralling staircase and the clock tower itself, so this was a real wow factor moment when you saw it for the first time. The atrium starts from deck three, which is just cabins like I mentioned, and on deck four there is guest services, which is essentially reception, and nearby there's also destination services who can help you organise any of the organised excursions, and we were kindly gifted two fantastic excursions to the Guggenheim in Bilbao, and also visiting Santiago de Compostela, and we were really impressed with these excursions, but I'll go into more details on that in a future video. 
Now, if we move further aft, we find the Auditorium, which is a unique feature on Borealis and also her sister ship, Belletta. And this can be used for a variety of functions, including acting as a cinema or being used for talks, but it was mainly used on our cruise for cooking demonstrations. And I really enjoyed this because when we went, the executive chef and his team were showcasing some of the food made in one of their speciality restaurants, Basco. I really enjoyed it because it's interesting to see what ingredients go into the fantastic dishes that we have on board. So I'd urge you to keep an eye out for these demonstrations during your cruise. Now, further aft on deck four, we encounter the first of two speciality restaurants on board Borealis and this is the Colours and Taste restaurant. And this features dishes inspired from Japan, Thailand, Philippines, and also from China. Now me and my boyfriend were gifted the opportunity to dine here one evening, and I cannot understate how amazing the food was. And what made it even better was that it only cost five pound per person, which is insanely good value for an extra charge restaurant on a cruise ship. What I really liked here was the fact that it gave me the chance to try genuine, authentic Asian dishes, and the service here was so attentive and you could really tell that the staff cared so much about the food that they were serving but also wanted to know what we thought. Do note however it's probably wise to have a light lunch prior to going here as not only the food is fantastic there's also lots of it. Now, leaving this restaurant and moving right to the aft of the ship, there is the impressive two-tier main dining rooms on board Borealis, with Deck 4 being known as Borealis and Deck 5 being known as Aurora, and we found it a really impressive place to eat. There's also a small offshoot, which is known as the Indian Ocean Room, and this is where we had our dinner, but it still serves exactly the same food, it just holds a handful of tables, and as a result, it gives a really nice intimate atmosphere, so we really enjoyed having our food here. Now, in the Aurora and Borealis restaurants, you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, and dinner here, and we were really impressed with the food here, and it was wonderfully presented too. Something that I was quite nervous about prior to going on Borealis was the fact that my boyfriend is dairy intolerant, and we weren't sure how they were going to deal with this, and I have to admit, they were absolutely amazing at accommodating this. And if you have a dietary preference, you just have to order the day before from the standard menu, and where possible, they will make a dairy-free option. If it isn't possible, they'll let you know in advance, so you can make sure you get the food that you want. And we even had a meeting with the executive chef to make sure everything was okay. Me and my boyfriend Yeon were super impressed with how good they were at accommodating this, not just in the main dining rooms, but also throughout the entire ship as well, and really helped put him at ease. So this is a big well done to Fred Olsen. Now if we jump up to deck 5 and move out of the Aurora main dining room, you encounter the wonderfully designed Oriental Tea Room, which has to be probably one of the most opulently designed lounges I've ever come across on a ship. And in this lounge you can enjoy a huge variety of teas from China, Japan and Taiwan, as well as British favourites such as Earl Grey. They even have tea cocktails, which is something that I didn't realise until the last day, so sadly I wasn't able to try them, but I'll just have to go on another cruise to see what they're like. Now walking past oriental tea rooms there's also the fantastic bookmark cafe and lounge and this really does what it says on the tin because it offers numerous coffees and hot chocolates in this area and also there's lots of seating situated really close to these big picture windows so it looks like the perfect place to relax and watch the world go by there's also a number of extra charged chocolates and truffles and things like that this would be really good to get as a gift for someone at home or just so that you can give them a try yourself now, as the name also suggests, there is a small library in this area as well. So if you fancy a few books to read during the cruise, then you can go here and have a look at their selection. Moving further midship on deck five, there's also the jewelry store. And if you fancy something rather sparkling, then this is the place for you. And although I'm not an expert, it did look like it had a good selection of jewelry and watches. Now moving further midships, there is the wonderful piano bar. This is an intimate venue which looks like the perfect place to have a pre or post dinner cocktail, listening to the pianist play your favourite music. Although sadly we never got time to try this venue ourselves, but that's something I will try and ratify on future cruises. Now further along, there's also the popular Morning Light Pub and Lounge, and this always seemed a really popular spot, and I love the artificial fireplace that they have here, and also all the nautical theme decor in this space. There was lots of seating next to those large picture windows, so you were never too far away from a fantastic view of the ocean. Now here, a numerous number of musicians played here, as well as a number of quizzes. 
Now opposite the Morning Light Pub and Lounge, there are a number of shopping options at the boutiques and also the port shop. And this ranges from a large number of fashion brands as well as traditional souvenirs like t-shirts and hats with Fred Olsen branding on. Nearby there's also a flower shop which I think is a lovely touch and seem to have some amazing arrangements. Now moving into the top deck of the atrium, on one side there is the fabulous ocean bar which we frequented every single night of our cruise and this was a really relaxed bar with some fantastic musicians playing here and this included the Borealis String Trio which was so so talented and also the house band Circle of Fifths and the Circle of Fifths offered numerous opportunities to dance the night away and it was lovely seeing couples dance and that wasn't an easy feat given the fact that we were on a winter cruise in the Bay of Biscay but it was lots of fun and it was a perfect way to start our evening so I'd recommend that you look out for performers in this venue on your cruise. Nearby there's also the Future Cruise Desk and this gives you the opportunity to book your future cruise whilst you're on board the ship. Now decks 6 and 7 are made up of cabins and these range from your interior cabins all the way up to suites and I was upgraded for the very first time from a standard outside cabin to a balcony suite situated very close to the bridge. Me and Yeon absolutely love this cabin but more on that in my cabin tour video which I will release soon. So if we jump up to deck 8 and move right to the front of the ship, we encounter the fitness centre and given the size of Borealis, this was really well kitted out in my opinion. Directly behind the fitness centre is the Atlantis Spa and this features numerous treatments, massages, hair styling and manicures and lots more. Now Fred Olsen spoiled me and Yeyan and gifted us both a spa treatment so we both enjoyed a full body Swedish massage. I wasn't really sure what to expect but I found it super relaxing even though I nearly fell asleep once or twice but it was lots of fun. Now leaving the spa and moving midships we encounter Borealis's only pool and this is a really good size in my opinion, also has two hot tubs and is all weather because it features a retractable roof. Needless to say because our cruise was in December it was firmly shut and unfortunately I didn't get a chance to go in the pool but it looked a good place to relax. There was a copious amount of sunbeds here so I imagine in sunnier climes you're going to have no problems trying to get a sunbed and I really love the seal statues here as well. Now nearby there's also the Poolside Cafe and this offers a variety of light bites and there are late breakfast options such as things like Eggs Benedict and also food being offered throughout the day. Moving further aft along Deck 8 there's also The View which is Borealis's buffet restaurant and this is open for breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea and dinner and there was a really good choice of food here and what was really nice to see was the fact that the servers were really well versed in knowing what allergens were present in different dishes so this was useful to make sure Ye and didn't have any dairy. It was still nice to see that you didn't touch most of the food, you asked the crew what you wanted and you handed it to you. The only exception to this were pre-plated items such as small desserts and things like that. Now a small portion of the view transforms in an evening into Vasco which is the second speciality restaurant on board Borealis. Now this is named after Vasco da Gama who was the first European to reach India by sea and this restaurant specialises in Goan inspired meals and we were gifted the opportunity to try this one evening and it's something completely different to any Indian cuisine that I've had before and tasted so so good. Everything here was really well presented and definitely worth the £5 supplement. There is like colours and taste, lots and lots of food on offer. So again, I would recommend a light lunch when you're having food here. Now both speciality restaurants were fantastic in catering for those with dietary requirements and they operated in a similar way to the main dining room. Prior to going out onto the open decks, if you move right to the aft of the ship, there is a small area of the aft deck which is covered and sheltered from the wind, so if the weather isn't 100% but you still want some fresh air, this is a really nice spot and we utilise this especially on our sail away from Liverpool. However, do note one side of the deck is reserved for smokers, so just something to be aware of. Now leaving that covered area, there is a fantastic aft deck which has a plethora of sunbeds. Now in the centre there is a rock garden and I presume this used to be a pool and I'm not really sure why it isn't a pool. However, I really like it because it's quite unique and really helps maintain a relaxing atmosphere in this area. There's tons of opportunity to look out over the aft of the ship, which I always appreciate. And also, if you look up, looking over the aft of the ship is a statue of Baudica from the now sadly scrapped sister ship, Baudica, 
and I think this is a really nice touch given how well loved that ship was. So moving up to the aft area of deck 9, there is a small amount of seating which leads directly to a large sports court and directly next to them are the iconic twin funnels of Borealis which I absolutely love. They're quite a unique design compared to modern day ships and I think with Fred Olsen's livery they look really striking. Now the midsection of deck 9 would look down to the pool deck if the retractable roof was open and in sunnier climes offers yet more opportunities to find a sunbed, although it's sadly way too cold and way too windy for anything like that on our cruise. Right at the front of the ship, jumping up to deck 10, there is a large area of open deck space where you can have, you guessed it, more sunbeds. So I feel like you're never going to struggle to find a sunbed when Borealis is cruising to sunnier areas. However, if we jump down to deck 9, the entire forward section is dedicated to my favourite bar on the ship, and that is the observatory, and it offers fantastic views over the ship's bow. I also love how it juts out slightly from the sides, so you can look all the way down the side of the ship, which I find really cool. And I love that they have these reclining chairs, which are perfect if you're just wanting to relax, have a drink, or read a book, whilst looking at the fantastic sea views. The entertainment's team also held a musical trivia quiz, which me and Ye were terrible at but we had lots of good fun. However on sea days in the afternoon this area transforms into the site of Fred Olsen's premium afternoon tea and this cost £10 per person and Fred Olsen gifted us the opportunity to try this for ourselves and it was a lovely experience as I absolutely loved the opportunity to have afternoon tea and it was such a nice relaxing experience whilst enjoying the fantastic sandwiches, cakes and scones as well. Now later in the evening, the observatory is always full of live entertainment, including the amazing Inspiration Band, who were fantastic. We especially enjoyed the singer, CJ, who had a fantastic sense of humour, and we always made sure we saw them when we could. And because we came here so often, we got to know the staff quite well, and we couldn't help but be amazed by how quick they learnt our names, our cabin number, and what our preferences were. So we were really impressed with that. Now me and Yeon were really impressed with the ship, and also Fred Olsen as a whole. It was extra special, it was our first cruise together, and Yeon's first ever cruise full stop. The ship, although smaller to what I'm used to, had plenty of venues, and I loved the traditional feel throughout the ship. At no point did I feel like I was bored, as it was quite the opposite, and normally there weren't enough hours in the day to do everything we wanted to do. And as amazing as the ship was, I really think it was the crew that made the cruise so good, because they couldn't do enough to help us, they were always so warm and welcoming, and although we were only on board for five nights, Borealis very quickly became to feel like it was my home and we were really sad to get off in Liverpool. I absolutely loved their traditional approach to cruising because it was really relaxing with the opportunity to do as much or as little as you wanted during the cruise. If you're going on Borealis or one of her sister ships in the near future you're going to have a fantastic time. So that was my ship tour of Fred Olsen's Borealis and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe because it's massively appreciated. If you want to know more about cruising with Matthew, then take a look at some of my other social media sites, the links are in the description below. I hope that you're doing well with everything at the moment and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew and thank you so much for watching.